Hello and welcome to this update video on this little camera here. This is the Peanut. It's not a go-to from Insta360. It's a version of it created in collaboration with Cadix FPV. Now I looked at this thing a couple of months ago and I've been using it regularly and sometimes things impress me enough that it's worthwhile revisiting but there are some tips and tricks with this little camera to get the best out of it and I want to talk about this in this video. Now this little camera is my kind of go-to for lots of things that I'm doing. The other camera that I really like, interestingly, is another version of an Insta360 camera. This is the one that was created with Beta FPV. This is the SMO 4K, which is kind of like a skeletonized GoPro style. But that one is a little bit big to fit on some of the models, and this has been flown regularly, stuck at the front of some of my quadcopters, but the place where I'm really enjoying flying with it is stuck in the nose of my Atom RC Dolphin. Because it stabilizes the footage, although you can turn that off, uh, you can get some really, really beautiful footage out of it. Now, this camera isn't perfect for the hobby. I think they could have gone a couple of steps further. Um, in the next version, let's hope, I'll cover that in a moment. And it isn't 4K, but the fact that you get the things like the ND filters in the box and uh, you have things like the power supply so you can connect it to a LiPo battery to keep it all tucked up are really cute ideas. So let me just show you the kind of footage that I'm getting off this thing. This footage I'm about to show you was taken with this camera in the nose of my Atom RC Dolphin. The FPV image is here in the top left hand corner to show you what the actual view of the goggles was like. Now this isn't 4K but the various filming modes I'm finding are very versatile and I really like the way the stabilized footage looks, especially on things like wings. As I'm flying around, it is doing a fantastic job of stabilizing all of this. Now, the way it works, it records the image in a uh, full sensor if you want it completely stabilized. There's kind of two levels of stabilization on this camera. There's a basic stabilization for kind of more like static action camera style stuff, or it records the entire sensor image, and then in post production, you can decide exactly how you want it to look. Things like field of view, frame rate, whether you want the horizon lock turned on and off, with the onboard gyro doing all these fantastic things. It's just really impressive to see how the horizon moves in relation to the FPV footage. We had winds of 15 gusting up to over 20 miles an hour at the altitudes that we were flying at on this particular day. It's a bright but blustery winter, well, like autumn day, I guess. And the footage looks absolutely spectacular. This wasn't using an ND filter. This was just using the standard cover that comes with it. Now I've been using this camera, or trying to use it, with the Insta360 Studio PC application. I did a video a while ago where I used various bit rates to try and figure out a way that it would look good when I want to watch it back on my own PC here, but also when I upload it on YouTube, YouTube didn't completely mangle the thing. I found that the best way to get the footage off this is actually to use the application on the phone. On there, you can select all the settings that you want, how you want it to look, whether or not you want things like the gimbal and horizon lock to be turned on and off, and then you can export it and it's saved down into the gallery on your phone, and then you can do with it whatever you want. And that's exactly how I processed the footage that we've just looked at. So for me, I would definitely download the Insta360 app onto your phone. You're going to need to, to activate this thing anyway, but use it to pull off the stabilized video and to stabilize it through the phone to give you the final video that you want to use in whatever you're doing with it. It is a moisture magnet. I would recommend when you finish flying, unscrew the removable lens and just leave it somewhere nice and warm. Uh, even on what feels like relatively dry days, it does seem to condense out a little bit. So be aware of that. It isn't kind of a hermetic seal when you put the front on. Don't bother with the Insta360 Studio app for this. Um, at the moment, with the latest version, I'm testing it here, it doesn't even recognize the footage, but the Insta360 app on the phone is fantastic and the one that I'm using for all of my footage now. 
I have been using the supplied power cable with the models that I've been flying to provide it with an extra bit of power and you can easily fly an entire day. The only issue with this of course is that it has limited internal memory. So after a couple of flights I'm getting into the routine of just connecting it to it with the phone, pulling um, that video off and then deleting it and making sure there's enough space. By keeping it plugged into the battery as I'm flying, I'm finding the battery is lasting and just keeps going and going and going. Now it says it has about 30 minutes flight time, 30 minutes recording time. In this colder weather, I would definitely say it doesn't. But making sure that it's plugged in to the balance tap of the battery, which is how I've modified my cable here, uh, it just continues to work for the entire day. Also, make sure that you have got it plugged in and powered by the USB cable. If you are going to be using it with something like your phone, uh, making sure that it is powered by the auxiliary stuff, either via a USB cable or via that extra cable that you get in the box with a LiPo battery means that it's going to stay awake if you're pulling particularly large video files off it. That seems to uh, use a lot of power when you are actually doing that editing and moving files around using Wi-Fi, I think it is, from this thing at the field. So my final thoughts on this is, after playing with it for two months, this is fantastic. This is probably the little camera at the moment that's getting pulled. Of all the action cameras that I have, this is the one that's getting pulled and used because the images from it, although they're not 4K, uh, they just look fantastic and the stabilization works absolutely beautifully. And it's a lot cheaper than something like a GoPro. Now, if they were to make another version, I'd have several suggestions. First of all, is don't put the lens here. Put the lens on the end, then it's much lower profile. We can kind of sink it into foam and the leading edges of wings and all kinds of things. I'd also get rid of the internal battery. Just let us power it from a LiPo battery. That's going to take a lot of weight out of it. And forget having static internal memory. Give us a little micro SD card and then we can put whatever micro SD card in there and that will also make moving files around after the fact an awful lot easier than trying to connect to things with an app uh, on a phone. However, until that version comes around, this definitely is a five pill kind of product. If you've been looking for a little action camera to use with your hobby to give you these kind of wonderful, beautiful, stabilized images, and you're not bothered about something like 4K, for the moment, this is my number one pick. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media, and if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.